Day two of hashtag Mug Club Quarantine. Uh, enter in the promo code quarantine at loudoutcredit.com slash mug club and you get $30 off for the whole month of April. Uh, we understand that a lot of you out there are lonely, you need more content, we're not doctors, we're not emergency responders, but we can create good to mediocre content for you on a daily basis, and we're making all of it free in front of the paywall, and of course adding morning shows Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Good Morning Mug Club at 10 p.m. Eastern. We really appreciate it. One other thing, people who are already members of Mug Club, please do consider renewing because uh, since you last signed up, well, we've been demonetized in public enemy number one. So we do need you. It's what keeps this going. And uh, I really hope that you spend time with us this month and enjoy the show. Oh, that's yeah. called the covering up of self-conscious because this oh. is a new Black Rifle shirt, but oh, it's a little, so it's an extra large, it's a little snug. You can see my nips. It's a bit nipply. Oh, okay. You can see my nips. Now. Oh, wow. So, uh, Rubbing them I isn't apologize helping. for that. Yeah. Uh, we're still back in here. We're doing uh, the, doing the, yeah. hope you're enjoying the uh, free, uh, free mug club for the month. There you go. Yeah. 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 This is yeah, kind of, this is more like a Thursday show. Uh, of course, in third chair, we have uh, my half-Asian Larry Bill Richmond. Still here. Cover yeah. up that cough. We gave him so the far. fisherman's friend. Yeah. Yeah. Quarter Black Garrett is there. What's up? Audio Wade. Howdy. And Gerald is there. Hi. How are you? We have a guest coming Doing up, well. but it's a surprise guest. I don't feel like <gasps> telling you because you should have been following along on social media. You should know. Uh, yeah. Before we move on to talk about all of the things in the news, not mostly coronavirus related because we know uh, that you're a little yeah. bit tired. Yeah. Uh, before we get to that, in Mexico, it should be noted, uh, girls still throw like girls. <laughs> They can't even domestic <laughs> terrorism uh, properly. Man, oh my god, that's so sad. This is why you got to go with slingshots. Just Carol, Carol, throw it. <laughs> Everybody's okay. I love how it goes nah. so quickly from Antifa bowl yeah. like yeah to. Ah! <laughs> no. Oh, no. My pants are on fire. Like you firebomb the protest. Chance and homeward bound with a lobster. Oh. I don't want it. I Exactly. Um, in other news, by the way, Bill De Blasio. This happened. Uh, he went to uh, went to the gym. Mm. Even his officials, they urged him, uh, you know, to socially distance, uh, limit coronavirus yeah, spread. Yeah, but absolutely. he's going to save the state of New York by curling in the squat rack. Ugh. Good for him. Oh, a little bit of insight humor. There's some CrossFitters think that's funny. No, they shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely. You know what I think is funny? Yeah. Is yeah. their orth orthopedic surgeon's bill? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Ooh. And the rhabdomyolysis. Uh, this comes uh, weeks, by the way, after you know Mayor De Blasio. He said that he was he was pleased with the New York's uh, response to the uh, coronavirus. Oh, that's uh, good. Meanwhile, yeah. it should be noted the citizens of uh, Detroit remain unfazed by the virus because they've all been murdered. Ah, yeah. So yeah, that's one way out. That, that so, mean it helps. Detroit. It's yeah. a little bit less consequential yeah. there. That should be the, like the last thing you do to stop the spread yeah. of the virus, but it, right. it's on the table. Or social distancing as they, call, you know, six feet apart, that's the rule. Or in Detroit, yeah. as they call it, coming together. Yeah. Oh. Six feet <laughs> under. You can't is find really, yeah. Yeah, the is, yeah, Even then, it's mostly wildlife. Right. Yeah. 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 Running dogs. How do I, I have a dog. question, yeah. How do I socially distance myself in downtown metro Detroit from a bear? <laughs> <laughs> the wild just wants deer. to hug me. Running around, stabbing us with <laughs> I, I spray it. I spray it down with the Clorox, but it just seems to irritate him more. Yeah. <laughs> we're supposed. We're all in this together. Let's bridge the party and those divide. <laughs> also, has anyone seen my arm? Um, <laughs> Bono, by the way, Bono uh, wrote a coronavirus song uh, oh. dedicated to, oh. to Italy. I bet it's great. Uh, yeah. Let Your Love Be Known is the U2 uh, frontman's first new music since 2017. So That's for those who haven't heard this right, that means that when you open your iTunes this morning, your phone will have automatically downloaded the coronavirus. It's oh. going to be there. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh. Sharing yeah. is caring. Oh, hello. Come what are you saying? I don't know. I'm not really <laughs> sure. I'm, sick. I'm a little sick. That is the, I still feel bad for them because they had to learn on one day 
how much everybody hates them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like we're gonna give we're gonna give them a, I don't know why they're talking like Paul McCartney. They love <laughs> I don't know how Bono talks. I, I, I only know how he sings, yeah. which is incredibly uh, irritating. <laughs> like, we're gonna give everyone the gift of you too. And right. this was a free gift and everyone still wanted a refund. Oh, they yeah. said yeah. no. Yeah. Mm-mm. Seriously, no this is gift. the worst. <laughs> yeah. They've overstayed uh, their welcome. They really all have. right. And uh, by the way, I'm sure you've been reading about uh, a lot of these coronavirus stories. If you mm-hmm. don't laugh, you'll um, die from the coronavirus. So stay home, <laughs> Laughter. laugh, Good enjoy the streams. Uh, Japanese students, they held actually a graduation ceremony in Minecraft, huh. in the game of wow. Minecraft. It was amazing. Well, wow. yeah, the, the, re- the real ceremony, of course, uh, was canceled due to the coronavirus shutdown. Right. So they played it in the, in the Minecraft world. And sadly, tragedy struck when um, other gamers became bored after playing Call of Duty. So there was a crossover yeah, yeah. Mm. with... Mm. That's prestige level right there. Yeah. The good thing Gosh. is they dropped pixelated leaflets beforehand to let everyone know. <laughs> Just about to let you know, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> Consider it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, okay, let me ask you your opinion. Harry Truman, war criminal or American hero? Both. No. Ooh. Ooh. no. Hey, that's a I'll take. tell you. That's the lazy man's right answer. General Curtis LeMay said afterwards, if we hadn't won, I would be tried as a war criminal. So... I yeah, think but that, that happens mean, to pretty much every losing yes. side. Yeah, I was going to say. No, I mean, that, I'm, I'm just saying, like, anyone would have considered that to be not great. Was it necessary? Was it definitely considered necessary at the time? Did it hasten the end of the war and save lives? Absolutely. Right. Was it still a great thing? No, nothing great. Not, there's no, nothing there's nothing great, great about yeah. World War II. Yeah. I would argue. Yeah, but it's in context. Of course, Nobody's saying it's a great event that happened. Like, we're not celebrating the fact that people had to die. Keep but, in mind, we did just make a joke about it in I Minecraft. No, yeah. I, but he's saying it's not a great thing. I'm <laughs> so like, arguing no, the sensitivity. Right, exactly. Yeah. None of us have a leg to stand on is what I'm saying. Yeah. Very, even, very, very even no credibility. Bit. Still bad. Yeah. It's even eight bit. No, no, I agree with you. Not a war it, criminal. It absolutely all. saved more lives than it took when you look at what it would have taken yeah. with, uh, with a land war. But uh, yeah, you know, listen, I'm not necessarily thrilled about it, except for sometimes when I am. Speaking of aquatic don't animals. Don't bear. Only uh, July 4th. Uh, I don't know why we're speaking about aquatic animals. Uh, <laughs> uh, there was a second dolphin, not coronavirus related. Oh. So there you go, you get a break. Oh, yeah, good. Not second, coronavirus, yeah. was um, sh- found shot dead off the Florida oh, coast. The? Oh, man. Uh, oh. This comes from the New York Post for Sad. some reason, even though it's about Florida. Uh, there's also growing concern <laughs> that there are more, but they will not hit the beach and be detected. Hmm. When asked if they knew anything wow. about the dolphins, a local fisherman stated, talk shit, get shot, fam. And so that seems like wow. he's... Oh, man. Little insensitive. Yeah, that's hard. Wow. The old man in the sea is going gold, AK. Yeah, man. Well, I go back to that. A bunch of I cash it. just I piled the, up on the boat. I love the detail. The tattoos and the knuckles. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. that's Where like that, that's like fish yeah, yeah. fisherman's <laughs> post Malone. I really that enjoy it. He's he's ready for the waves. He's ready for the rain. He's ready for those shit talking <laughs> yeah. narc ass dolphins. <laughs> and Somali pirates apparently. He's and, ready for all of them. You know what really? Bo- you guys, we've been hearing this quite a bit. Anytime. Dolphin stories come up. There's always somebody who comes towards you. Know dolphins yeah. are smarter than humans. How often have we been hearing always. this? Dolphins are oh, smarter yeah. than people. So and okay, I understand that some people may argue in forms of communication or communicate communicative patterns that that may or may not be true. But let's let's be real here. As a general rule, dolphins as a species, they're actually pretty dumb. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I love how that's what it takes to get pill going. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're Flat, welcome, audio yeah. listener. Flat Earth. I love, the, I love his little dolphins. I like, I like one of them. He's you know what's like, no. I wish we did. You know what's so sad? Is I, I wrote that while we were taping a Midnight Cowboy. Yeah. yeah I wrote that ago. while yeah. naked in the shower. Huh. And Wade and I were like, yeah, this is pretty yeah. funny. Wait, Wade was, was in the shower? No, he, no. Was, he was videotaping me in the shower. Oh. Also, this <laughs> happened in 1997 oh. because they use the word videotape. Yeah. 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 He was swinging with a camcorder oh, over the shoulder. Yeah. Um, and you can also use it to watch VHS tapes afterward. It's a Straight magnificent go. tool. Yeah. And we, we've been punting this for like six weeks because we just while, haven't yeah. found the right place to fit in flat earth dolphins. And yeah. if I'd have known it would work this well. Now is and the now time. What about why, now made you think is today thing, is the day? Why has this been <laughs> sitting in the scrapyard for so long? Yes. Oh, all right. Any other opinions uh, on uh, flat earth I dolphins? dolphins yeah. No? Okay. I love them. By the way, I am 98% convinced that the earth is a globe. 98. Uh, 98. <laughs> let's get what? Time for the meat. <laughs> 
just yeah. lay it on the table with a grill because I don't I care about the oxidants. Yeah. Um, Cross contamination. Who apparently, cares? it's not good for you. Who grilling needs to grill meat anymore. Now. They say grilling meat causes cancer because of the char. But you also get really more. Yeah, don't yeah. believe that. You also get more. Uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Not oxidants. Antioxidants. No, not. <laughs> I know what that is. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, carcinogens. Okay. Like so many carcinogens in meat. Yeah, but you also get more carcinogens uh, than you would eat if you ate steaks every day and like one oh. shiitake mushroom. Oh well. So then I started, really now I got to start eating shiitake mushrooms. <laughs> Just to make up for and it. And I don't know a shiitake mushroom. I wouldn't recognize a shiitake mushroom. I hate them. If it walked in. Which are the ones that are full mushrooms but smaller? I don't know. Okay. By the way, Gerald, <laughs> no. did you guys notice that Gerald A. changed his shirt? Because he spilled something on it. That's the beauty okay, of uh, okay, no. doing this, uh, not exactly live, but tomorrow will be live. Of course, Good Morning Mug Club will be taking your yeah, chat at morning. 10 a.m. Eastern. Stories of the Boom. day. All mug, all mug Club month. Okay. So uh, this is something that I want to talk about because it pissed me off. And why am I doing this? I don't know. Oh, You're rubbing. It's like someone sucked me acid. Thing. And I'm like, mm. like touching shit. The desk yeah. feels. Mm. I bring you that. meat. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Do you join up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, never thought, I never thought that us putting it in front of the table would be an anti-commercial. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, subscribers went down, really. So my question to you, when it comes to the handling of the, the Chinese virus, have you heard the media celebrate any of the innovations made by the private sector. You're talking about uh, retooling your factories for masks, for testing, for treatment, for therapeutics. Yeah. I think that it's journalistic malpractice that mm -hmm. these aren't being shouted from the rooftops right now. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a, why don't, shouldn't we want to give people hope? It seems that they want to give people false hope in mm -hmm. this idea of Medicare for All or a socialized healthcare system because of course, this is what we need to talk about. The claim that we're seeing from the left on the coronavirus pandemic is that we wouldn't have these problems if we had universal healthcare the public mm. sector could make all of this go away. Here's them saying it, because you don't have to take my word for it. We will talk, I am sure, about Medicare for all. Yes, but when I talk about health care being a human right and all people having health care, the coronavirus crisis makes that abundantly clear as to why it should be. Wrong. Is the coronavirus the best case for Medicare for Let's all? Let's reverse that shot. Coronavirus is a very good case for oh, Medicare yeah. for all, but it's, it's like looking in through the lens of an aquarium. case for Medicare for all all the time. If we had Medicare for ah, all, yeah, not much better. Ah. we would have been far better prepared to How? the crisis. There is no middle ground when it comes to dealing with a national security threat, and Medicare for like all is an example of a policy that would take on that threat with the seriousness no, that it requires to be taken on. What would Medicare for All do? It would ensure that people actually could get a test for coronavirus, that they could get treatment for the coronavirus. Hmm. Come, come again, retard. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Here's the thing. I don't think we could have a more crystal clear oh, case that the exact opposite is yeah. true. COVID-19, the Chinese virus, Wu flu, whatever you want to call it, there has never been more of a crystallization as to the need for private industry due to the sheer ineptitude of the government. They talk about, they want to compare us to other countries. Let, let, for, this is something that actually I stumbled across. Let's okay. take the countries at the top of the World Health Organization, uh, their rankings, right? They rank right. us 36 yeah. right next to Slovenia. Now, with, let, let's take them <laughs> with a comparable population size to the United States. Let's look at their total deaths and deaths per capita. Italy's number two and Spain oh. is number seven. Whoops. We barely edged out Slovenia. Uh. <laughs> Here's the truth. So close. Government mucked this up. Private industry is fixing it. And they're being held responsible with fixing it. So there are a few examples that we can walk through as to yeah. why you shouldn't entrust all of your health, uh, all of your health and health care needs to the government. Uh, let's go back to the, the Obama administration, right? They never replenished the stockpile of masks after the Ebola scare. Now, I know, I know Jerks. before people get, people are going to get upset. You're going to blame Donald Trump for uh, not accepting masks from China. Here's the thing. The truth is a lot of these masks and test kits from China, they've had mm. to be recalled yeah, by the countries yeah. that use them. They're so, pre-infected, so pre they, yeah. they didn't know. They came pre-infected. Yeah, it was the pre-infected version. You don't want that they version. They thought it was like a cigar roller where yeah. they test one cigar in every box. Yep. Mm. Like, box well, of 25! You gotta do more. <laughs> it's not green. <laughs> it's not a pregnancy test. Yeah. Oh, my bad. It's kind of like those smallpox blankets. Same kind of thing. I already pay shipping. So first, when he talks about <laughs> if, the if we had socialized healthcare, everyone would be able to be tested, right? Yeah. That's what that guy just, yeah. just, just uh, said. No. So no, let's be clear happen. that it couldn't be more dishonest. That is, it's, if today were opposite day, like if we were going into scouts where they have opposite right. day and everyone wears their clothes on backwards because it's fun and we like to have a laugh, he would be tops. <laughs> yeah. But... 
Here's another truth for you. At first, the CDC was the only place approved by the FDA to make the testing kits. Oh. Right? The CDC refused testing kits and capabilities from the private sector, and we all know how that turned out. Only once the private sector industry was allowed to step up, and this keep in mind too, they were already stepping up, but they weren't allowed to, did we see the improvement. Since then, yeah. what do we have? We have United States companies that have developed the fasting test, fasting testing kits, fastest testing kits in the world. I'm sure you have hard, to test it to while out, you're yeah. fasting. Yeah, like a sometimes, cholesterol it test. helps. I don't know, I'm not like a doctor. AB study. But I would, <laughs> I would advise avoid eating a fatty meal before the swab. Yeah. So the fastest <laughs> testing kit in the world, Abbott Laboratories. I have that name right. Yeah. yeah. Private U.S. company. They invented a COVID test. Five minutes. Boom. You get results. That's huge. Only He's earlier weeks. this week. And then they were topped by another company, Bodysphere. Developed a two-minute test that was approved wow. today. Two is the magic number. Two-minute COVID testing. Mm. Stick that in your pipe and kill yourself with it, CDC. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the private industry stepping in worked. It sounds like I mean, it. almost, we but CDC, maybe not. CDC monopoly didn't work, and now, and I know you're wondering, well, hold on a second, the CDC, at least they're held to some kind of accountability, right. and they're better than most private companies. Sure. No, and oh. which private companies are they, they're worse than all of them. <laughs> <laughs> They've been less successful than all of them. And here's another, here's another problem, not learning from their mistakes. The FDA, they're still preventing private companies from creating as many tests as possible. They're only approving 100,000 a day when these companies could be upping it to 160,000 a day. The, oh government, the government is not here to help. I just want to make that yeah. very clear. By the way, hit the notification bell. If you're subscribed, hit all notifications so you're notified whenever your video goes up. It goes up at 9 p.m. Eastern, of course. Mug Club Quarantine all month, $30 off all promo month. code quarantine. And we are doing morning shows live talking with you at 10 a.m. So each one of those guys that was on the, in that video, the gals as well, claimed that if we had universal health care. using the term I'm, gals I'm, I very loosely. Very loosely, very loosely. <laughs> claimed Generously. that if we had universal health care, health care, people could be treated and tested, mm -hmm. right? We obviously know we just went through the test. The treatment part, what? Do governments around the world that have universal health care or something like it tend to have more hospitals than they need? Yeah. Do they tend to have really short wait times like your video when you went undercover in Canada? Was that a short wait time to get in to see somebody? Because that's short the only time. way you could have had everybody treated is if you had millions of people, beds, laying around waiting on patients yeah. right. that weren't being used. That's, that's not the only change way. the stockpile. We didn't have more And nurses and, more and doctors no. and yeah. everything else. They made claims that they cannot back up at all. No, it couldn't be fixed at all. And by the way, here's something else just to show you how smug the media is. Remember, they, they mocked Donald Trump mercilessly. when He, he made this suggestion uh, just either... I think it might have been earlier this week, at the most, last week. They're throwing away the mask right away. They're throwing away, and when you hear 55 million masks were ordered, I'm saying 55 million. How could it possibly be such a number? And they say, oh, that's just a small fraction of what we need. And I said, why aren't we sanitizing masks? You know, you look at the masks. I've looked at all the different masks. Some don't lead themselves to, to doing that, I think, but many do. And I said, why aren't we? We have very good... Uh, liquids for doing this, sanitizing the masks, and that's something they're they're starting to do more and more. They're sanitizing the masks. Okay, a couple of things here. F first off, this was assumed to be crazy with leftist outlets claiming that he was irresponsible. <laughs> Why? Citing federal guidelines, because the federal guidelines would, of course, be correct. Here's the thing. Right. You also need to separate what Donald Trump says from the soundbite that you see on Twitter. When you hear that oh, of course, yeah. in its totality, like, oh, okay, that makes sense. He says, he even hedges his words. Some masks maybe, some masks yeah. not. But you have to understand the difference between what Donald Trump says sometimes and what he means. Yeah. Well, we we, uh, we had some very fine liquids. And so the media says, he just thinks you can spray some Everclear on it and call it a day. Yeah. No, what he was talking about was some kind of a system yeah. to make masks reusable. Recycling. You should be fans of that, right? <laughs> no, not when Donald yes. Trump says it, Jake You'd Tapper. Think, yeah. Well, careful. Block your mouth. Don't let this tin can I'm about to kick hit you in the teeth, you piece of shit. Because Patel, a nonprofit, started using this mask sanitization technology. Oh. They now have machines that can sanitize 80,000 masks a day oh, in Ohio, wow. are shipping machines to other states. They'll hopefully result in 400,000 masks That's being huge. cleaned per day. So That's I get amazing, it. Him yeah. saying we have some very fine liquids, okay? Very fine <laughs> liquids. So the best. Absinthe. Maybe a port. Whatever it is that you want to assume he's saying, it's not that crazy. No, and he said we should be looking into this. And by the way, in a crisis, you do start to go, hey, we have to change how we're doing things. We don't have enough masks. In a crisis, we need to change the rules a little yeah. bit and still maintain sanitized Not masks. only, and we'll get to uh, private industry stepping up uh, and, and creating more masks, right? But now you've increased the, the ability to exponentially because yeah. you can use masks that you already have. Exactly. Right. Every 
every single journalist should be talking about how now they can sanitize tens or hundreds of thousands of masks per day. We are going to have hundreds yeah. of thousands new masks made because of private industry who stepped up, who, by the way, didn't even have to be forced to by the Defense Production Act, and the FDA did approve the drug that Donald Trump was touting mm. last week that you oh. said was irresponsible because there was no kind of medical basis. You're wrong, you're wrong, and you should be happy that you're wrong because it's going to save, I mean, let's be honest, dozens of lives with this pandemic here going on. <laughs> Here's another claim that they've made quite a bit. Uh, that other countries with the socialized healthcare systems, that they've somehow done better than us. So let, let them... But the federal government, the Trump administration, botching the rollout of testing for this virus, it continues to set the United States apart. FT, the Financial Times in London today, put out this graph showing how, how well various countries are doing in terms of testing for the virus. When you look at the best, you know, the take best my healthcare system Burt in the Ward. world, that's something that's <laughs> up for debate. South Korea, we're up to South Korea has up to ten thousand tests per day. They've been able to provide tests to any single person that wants it, and here people are scrambling. Okay, all right. So let's get back to South <laughs> Korea. Let's go back to Bert Ward's comments there. Bert Maddow, a <laughs> yeah. uh, country that they're talking about, who they've they've praised for years, of course, yeah. based on the World Health Organization's ranking. Which, by the way, I love now that no one can ever use that again. Mm. The Young Turks Network. <laughs> The leftist organizations, you can't say, well, we rank behind what, France, Italy, Spain. Yeah. Uh, Do we really want to talk about that anymore? Yeah. We always knew that was <laughs> yeah. the case because of subjective polling, but now you know it's the case because the entire world has seen it once Italy said, you know what, you're over 60, you're on your own. And that's not yeah. so old. They retire at like 35 in Italy. They don't create anything that benefits <laughs> the rest of the world. Pasta was Chinese. Piss off. Really? So... Didn't know that. Let's look at Italy with its nationalized healthcare system, right? They had by far the highest death rates. And its population, quite elderly, of course, the intensive care yeah. units, they were just advised, just they said, what do we do with these elderly people? And I said, well, I don't just don't just don't do anything. Yeah. But what do we do? <laughs> well, how do we how do we help them? We just don't help them because we don't we can't I mean we can't raise taxes anymore and people don't work. Yeah, but you said we, we call the government. Yeah. And the wait times, They're of course, we've talked about this before. The wait times are terrible. We've talked about this with all these countries. You can go yeah. back and watch your socialized healthcare videos. And Horrible. if you have a broken arm or something, to them, it's a nuisance because it's non-essential. Yeah. It's like a nosebleed. But now when it comes to a pandemic, there can be no debate. There's no denying that the wait times increase the mortality rates. Yep. That it's And at the very least, it's a violation of human rights to not allow people to purchase privatized healthcare, yeah. which is yeah. increasingly rare in these countries. But that was the case in Canada, at least until 2005. Let's go to South Korea, by the way. This is one that really bothers me as yeah. people point to South Korea. Sure, they, they were ahead of us on testing, absolutely, because they quickly mobilized, and what did they do? They used the private sector for testing kits, which the CDC here said, no, 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 you can't do. Now that right. we're doing it, we're surpassing South Korea very quickly. Oh, yeah. Also, something that when people point to South Korea as a successful example of the social distancing protocols, they effectively doxed their own citizens. Yeah. yeah. South Korea, they were tracking the phones of citizens and then released detailed information to the public via apps, including age, descriptions, and movements over the past few days so that people could say, oh, 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 oh okay, I see. Man have a sneeze, go to park. We kill him. Oh, yes. <laughs> so if we want to point, this is something really important because when they're in trying to demonize the United States yeah. because of the communist sympathizing media, and I mean that because they were actually parroting communist Chinese government talking points. I say that without a hint of hyperbole. Yeah. Hyperbole, hyperbole. Hi. Hyperbole is hyperbole, and I throw a pipe at the camera. There you go. It's like a 3D <laughs> show on TGIF. Oh, oh, Without oh. a hint of hyperbole, this media who is sympathetic to the Chinese government, they will take any opportunity to demonize the American government at all costs. Well, when you yeah, tell totally. them we should we should be like South Korea, let the American public know what they did. Americans. Yeah. You think they have, a, they have a, a greater success rate here in dealing with corona? Okay, if you just want to use one metric, but are you willing to turn over yeah. all of your phone's yeah. data? Yeah. Are you willing to turn over all of your location services? Not to mention your private web searching on your iPhone. You want to turn that over to the government <laughs> so they can release it to the public? Because yeah, yeah. that's what out. South Korea did. I know. You could kill everybody who has this virus as well and have zero new cases. That's right? absolutely right. You could do that and just report, hey, yeah, we're doing fantastic. Works. We killed everybody. It's kind of like Russia, yeah. right? We don't hear anything out of Russia. I guarantee you they have some. And they're like, ah, oh, we'll just kill them. That's it's what right. Pelosi did we'll with her more. cabinet. Yeah. You don't see them anymore. No. Have you seen your assistant bringing her a coffee? No. No, 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 no. Uh, not in a while. She needs their souls to sustain herself. So another <laughs> truth. Um, we weren't as far along as other countries. That's true. Once we started testing, 
and we started testing more people uh, in eight days, I think, eventually, than uh, South Korea tested in eight weeks yeah. once we started testing. And now, of course, we have more privatized industry, as we talked about, stepping up so we can test more people. Again, bottleneck, and CDC, quickly. socialized government. That's what we're talking about here, right? Socialized healthcare run by the government versus private industry coming out with a five-minute test and a two-minute test. I bet you the next one, you it'll just you just start to say the word test into and the test done. like you're positive. Yeah. Just te- Oh! <laughs> It could tell by it my viral every time. load. That's a terrible test. <laughs> More than any other country in the world right now, as far yeah. as that. So that talking point is gone as well. Yeah. Here's another point that they, they'll, uh, still use that, that they'll make. Another area where the United States actually, by the way, is doing really well uh, because of the private sector. Independent researchers, they found success with combination therapy. We don't have a cure, but we do have what they call therapeutics. We do have yeah. treatment. Donald Trump went up and talked about chloroquine. Uh, chloroquine, 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 I don't care. Fish tank chloroquine cleaner. and antibiotics. Things. Fish tank cleaner. Just go home. <laughs> That's how it's pronounced. Just take a shot and tell us how it works out. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> he was oh, mocked. Bill, Bill he was exactly. mocked across the media. Right, this is irresponsible. Yeah. Well, now it's FDA approved oh. in emergency uses. It was already an FDA well, approved drug because of its safety profile, but now it's FDA approved specifically for coronavirus. Hmm. But before that, a private practitioner had prescribed it off-label. Had 699 people who were treated successfully. Not to mention all of wow, the independent wow. testing, which we talked about on this channel. And this is really concerning. Twitter and YouTube were removing or censoring videos yeah. that talked about chloroquine as fake news or talked about Chinese masks being faulty. They removed some of these tweets and videos. How scary is that? When these people are in charge of, of fact-checking, and not only are they dishonest, but they are dishonest in the way in a way that could save thousands of lives. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And then the, the story goes out about the fish tank cleaner that we've covered ad nauseum here, and they put that out everywhere. Yeah, man and woman die when taking right. Trump's advice. And I'm like, wait, how's that up in this That's one's in every Let me ask you this. feed? How many more stories have you seen out there about a dumbass drinking fish tank cleaner than you have compared to the my hip pillow guy being able to create fifty thousand masks a yeah. day, four hundred thousand masks being sanitized, yeah. and the fact that that drug, not the fish tank cleaner, is now FDA. Because I haven't heard a peep on that from no, Huffington Post no, or New York Times, right no. but some mongoloid drinks po- koi pond cleaner, and that's at the top of Reddit? Really? Do your job, moderators. It's not happening. I don't know. They're probably unemployed. You're working it. from home. Still no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> It's and PJs. when we're talking about a vaccine, yes, researchers are working on a vaccine, yeah. and it'll probably take about a year and a half. Why? Mostly because of the FDA baggage, just for the same reason right. as chloroquine, Red right? Tape. It's really hard to move a barge. It's sometimes more helpful when you have Donald Trump coming in with chloroquine and another barge going, get over there! <laughs> get out of my way. It does help. <sighs> it's terrible. This show's more of a tugboat. It's easier to move. <laughs> So here's something, while we're talking about, we do have to uh, get going with uh, Razor Fist, and then we'll see you tomorrow for Good Morning Mug Club. But this is something that just bothers me so much. I don't think it could possibly be more clear at this point that we need the private sector. The only other country that's had success beyond doxing its citizens when you look at South Korea is because they did mobilize the private sector. Once we started doing that here in the United States, guess what? We start doing better. And guess what else? Donald Trump starts speaking directly to his audience with these evening press briefings. His approval rating goes up. So what do they do? Let's stop airing Trump. Let's run a story about people who drank fish tank cleaner to condemn Trump for touting a drug. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's been approved by the FDA and it actually shows some oh, of the <laughs> Let's not cover it. Let's At blame all. Donald Trump for saying that we should be able to sanitize masks. Oh, wait a second. We actually can do that now because private industry stepped up to do it. It's almost like Donald Trump said this kind of knowing what was coming around the corner. Let's just silence this. This is an amazing situation for me because after 9-11, and I know that a lot of people didn't like George Bush. At the very yeah. least, we came together for the common yeah. good. And right now we're fighting this sort of invisible enemy. I know some people are saying it's not technically invisible if you have a microscope. I don't care. The point here is that I don't know if there'll ever be a time now where we'll come together again against an enemy. If something could ever help us find common ground, yeah. it would be this right here. And I don't just mean fighting a virus, but I mean the idea that we are making unbelievable headway, and we are making headway not from tearing people away from their jobs and place of business and having them holed up in their apartments, though some people need to continue doing that, obviously, but we are making headway because of American businesses innovating and stepping forward to save fellow Americans' lives. I know it's a bad narrative because we want to think that capitalism is greedy and bad, but guess what? These people are willing to sacrifice their business's capabilities to step up for the greater good, and the fact that these stories are not front page 
everywhere at a time when the American public is panicked and you could offer them a sliver of hope is to me not only dishonest, it is journalistic malpractice. I don't even know if that's a real thing because you're not really held to any kind of a standard like a lawyer or a doctor, <laughs> but if you could be, we hang you up at dawn before breakfast, figuratively speaking, of course, not literally. <laughs> not, I just want real. you fired and on the unemployment line with everyone else who you've harmed. Let's get to uh, Ray Mr. Fist. Is he there? Fist? I think I need to change my shirt. I spat. Black Rifle Coffee. All right, you're gonna have to uh, you have to soften my mic yeah, here, Audio okay. Wade. You ready? Ready? Soften it because I don't want to blow everyone's right. eardrums out. Okay. All right, that's fine. You can bring me back up. The lights were flickering every now and then, and I hit it, and I was going, "What's going on yeah. here? There are gremlins in the lights." Speaking of gremlin, because they're they're <laughs> oh, unsightly a nice and a little like bit it. of a nuisance, but they tend to be clever. Yeah, right. they yeah, get the yeah, best of the folks, the especially that old lady <laughs> on the uh, the the chairlift. Yeah, right. Where yeah, they man. launch her I the like match. a catapult yeah. from the What's film. A, like a trebuchet, really. Really, yeah. yeah. Uh, although, actually, our next guest he can he can delineate for us, so I know the difference between a trebuchet, even though I'm oh. French, and a catapult or a proper <laughs> trebuchet. You can follow him on the Twitter at Razor Fist Zero is the Razor Fist, and of yes, course he has the Rageaholic YouTube channel. Good friend of the show, Mr. Fist. How are you, sir? Uh, good to be back. How the hell are you, sir? I'm doing fine. What is you it? You staying safe from the pinko pox over there, or? <laughs> Uh, we, unfortunately, we're in an area with a lot of Asians, but I find that they tolerate racism quite well. <laughs> if they walk up and they go like, oh, excuse me, I go, no, 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 no. They're like, okay, 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 okay. I, uh, I understand. I, uh, okay, okay. As as it's a not, me. <laughs> it's not you. It's a me. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so what's the difference between a trebuchet and a catapult? Is it that one has the rope? Or it's an old person. I think it's a hagapult. I think actually. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. So that's what he's got. Is that just, is that just where you're tying jokes. Nancy Pelosi to the end of it and launching right. it like yes. a dead right. rabbit? I think that's actually how they do her facelifts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, they just sling it back on her face, and she just stands what and she it? catches yeah. it like a knife. Yeah. What was it? I think Dennis Miller said it looks like she's perpetually pulling five Gs in a wind tunnel. <laughs> yes, that's exactly <laughs> correct. I used to think she was actually pretty fetching, only physically. I mean, spiritually, she's repugnant. Yeah, of course. Uh, but for an older lady, Disgusting. she put herself. To, for a very old lady, she put herself together well. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about a few before we get to the, the pandemic and the commie pox. You're sounding a little nasally, Mr. Fist. Are you, <laughs> Yeah, I got I got some mutant allergies going on, and okay. it, and it, it decided to wait for the moment when we were all dying of the commie cough. <laughs> yeah, so that was a nice yeah. that was a nice little perpetual heart attack for the last week and a half. That was a that was a hoot and a half. Yeah, yes, well, I have the same <laughs> issue, but I always I go wait, hold on a second. Okay, first off, my throat is scratchy. Have I done Gilbert Godfrey or Nick Nolte recently on the anymore. show? And if I have, that answers it. And if not, I just go, are my eyes itchy as well? And if my eyes are itchy, it's allergies. And then I know that everyone in public judges me no matter what. Right, right. I have never had more people stand farther away from me. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Really? People will just cross. It's amazing. That uh, which is bizarre, because if you look at the footage out of New York, uh, the the parks are overcrowded. Right. So uh, that's, I, that's interesting. I was going to say it's bizarre because, you know, you look like you're in a in a uh, Ramones cover band and this is the first right. time people <laughs> cross the street when they see you. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, I, I, speaking of New York, I'd like to. Uh, did you see that the, the big like red siren on top of the they, they, some empath? in the city of New York decided that the most effective method of allaying the fears of the public was to install the the eye of f***ing Sauron on top of the Empire State Building. Right. That was, It'll make everybody feel make much better. Scary noise. It, it seems like that's honestly a, a difference in worldview where, you know, Donald Trump said, don't panic, we will get this under control. And they're like, yeah, 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 well, see, because we hate Trump. <laughs> yeah. Code red! 
I mean, what is this president supposed to do? Tell everybody you're screwed. You're all, you know, right. you're all going to die. Um, Mike, Lind- Mike Lindell yesterday should have been like, actually, you should probably smother someone with one of these pillows. <laughs> <laughs> right. And as much as I appreciate him uh, retooling to make masks, let's be honest, the my pillow is just a bunch of packing peanuts in a trash bag. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that innovative. <laughs> it is not comfortable because I'm a pillow guy. My wife and I bought one at Bed Bath. We said we want to buy the pillow from the um, the rapist, and they said, oh, and, they, and they said, yeah, we know <laughs> that's right, that's you shop <laughs> right this way. And then we grabbed it. It is like pack, foam packing peanuts. Yeah. So what, what is it? Nick DiPaolo says it's uh, the my pillow is perfect for muffling the screens of a ten year old. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> exactly. But but that's a perfect. I think it also sort of showcases the just the elitism of journalists when they're mocking this guy who is building up capacity to fifty thousand masks a day. Right. This is his business. Seventy five percent of it is being retooled, and then yep. journalists. And I don't mean comedians. I don't mean content creators. Journalists create nothing, and they spend all night mocking him mercilessly for being at a press conference. I'm like, hey, isn't this good news that this guy is building masks? Isn't that a good thing? Unless anxiety, fear, and elitism is a gross domestic product. I don't know. Right, Um, yeah. That's, if only he were manufacturing toilet paper. Gosh. Right. You know? <laughs> well, I'm sure in a pinch. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> that and, and that may be a way to fix the Fed. Because like, how did how did toilet paper become coin of the realm? Is right. My question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, it's the bartering tool. Like like Kleenex. You know, uh, soup maybe water. What the? F- but TP. Yeah. Like what? what, what is, is everyone like subsisting on bran muffins, prune juice, and Dolco Lax? Like this is the post-apocalypse. Now? Right, I know. This is the post-apocalypse. I guess now we know why all those Mad Max bad guys wear assless chaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never thought about it. We wipe at dawn. We wipe at dawn. <laughs> um, I, I just. I, it is. Rem- I think that is proof positive that there's no logic to the fear of the pandemic. Like if you want to, if you believe that this thing is, you know, contagion and it's going to have a 20% death rate as, as the real pandemics that they portray in the films, you know, the unreal pandemics that they portray in the films, pa- toilet paper wouldn't be a part of the equation. It's not even a digestive affecting virus. So right. it, it's remarkable to me. It just goes to show you that it, we, human beings, particularly the American public, are far more manipulated by the media than they realize. The reaction to the reaction is what scares me a little bit. Now, I do want to get to your stream being taken down, but since we're talking about this, you did do a video uh, originally on your channel about the pen, about uh, coronavirus. I think this was back in February, if I'm not mistaken, where you were saying that people should be on guard and paying attention to it. So you did think it was at least a threat or something people should be aware of. Yeah, I I thought you could take and mind you, this is early February, so I'm trying not to make panic buyers or anything. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe having some some stuff like common sense stuff, like, you know, a little bit of water, stuff that you're going to eat anyway. Right. Stuff that you're going to use anyway would not be so bad, apparently. But I think what really it becomes a self-perpetuating cycle, though, is I think when people see empty shelves, they assume, well, I must need that. Right. You know, right. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. And it just feels more panic buying over and over and over again. Yeah. And what runs out quicker because it's gigantic. Yes. Yeah, right. Huge. Is uh, big rolls of toilet paper. Of course, every single time. Yeah. But I, I think I'm finally starting to agree with the conspiracy nuts. I, I think the virus had to be man made. Really? It was engineered by Campbell's Soup, uh, Purell, and the Charmin Corporation. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. They're playing the long ball. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. And don't forget Zoom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, it is pretty uh, remarkable. Well, what do you think, though, since you were warning about this? And I, I've talked about how Donald Trump did implement a travel ban, uh, which was accused, you know, he was accused of xenophobia by Joe Biden. So yeah. the Democrats have picked the single worst candidate to run against Trump. They're hoping Russian, impe- you know, the impeachment didn't work. They're hoping the whole oh, Russia yeah. ho- didn't work. So. Let's get him on coronavirus. That's why they want to stop airing his uh, nightly briefings right now because his approval rating is going up. And Joe Biden, really, the one thing that we know that President Trump did differently than any other president, because I don't know how much a president controls this, but this guy did go against the grain and ban travel from China, and he was excoriated by the left for it. Can we at least say, all right, you know what? That's a win for him. Can you put that up on the scoreboard for him now? Yeah. No kidding. And you know your field of candidates is weak when they're upstaged by a microbe. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Are you, are you yeah. <laughs> They're just gonna they're just gonna trot out a little animated version of coronavirus at convention like in uh, like in Jurassic Park. Corona DNA. Right. That's and how about Biden Biden getting me too Like who could have connected oh, those yeah. dots, huh? Yeah. Jeez. I don't like, buy it. I don't buy it because she's over twelve. 
Right. <laughs> it like, doesn't line seriously, up. Seriously. Like the skiggy old f- with facial skin pulled like a condom over a cantaloupe, you know, who huffs 10 year olds. Oh, gosh. Who, yeah. who could have seen that coming except Stevie Wonder? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let me ask you this now. Since you were talking about this beforehand, you think it's man made, which I'll, we can get into at some point, but uh, maybe we won't. Uh, but um, do you think that the response has been proportional or do you think that there's some hysteria for someone who was early on this but now you see how far it's gone uh, how do you get oh oh there were authoritarians licking their chops waiting for this thing right like they were they were just waiting for a uh, for any kind of crisis of any proportion i think i think frankly you go another week maybe two and then you take you tell the, the at risk people to stay home and maybe take extra steps to keep them home and then everybody else who's less at risk probably needs to go back to work yeah. and get on with their lives. For Christ's sake, we went back to with our lives during the Spanish flu. Go go look at those numbers. Yeah. <laughs> we, we went on with our lives and continued working back then. What's so special now? Um, and I we understand the exponential growth and so forth, but the same thing was true with the Spanish flu. The same thing is true in, in all pandemics, frankly. Um, yeah. I, I think at a certain point, you got to get on with it. Well, I said this a long time ago, and everyone's like, oh, you can't do that. I said, well, how about we just quarantine old and sick people right, yeah. and let everyone else, you know, uh, try and implement social distancing where they can, wear masks, wash their hands, so implement all of these, these measures that we have, let people build up a herd immunity, and protect those who are vulnerable. And people said I was crazy. Now I see it suggested everywhere. I get it. I'm a late night comic. People don't take, but right. can, can we put that one on the scoreboard for myself? Yeah. Right. Bre- breaking news. Crowder calls to end the Democratic primaries. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, no, it, it really is remarkable that we have a list of exclusive or sorry, a list of essential businesses. Uh, seems to me we should have created a list of non-essential businesses that probably should have closed down where contamination or, uh, you know, transmission would have been more likely. You know, like the, the ball play pen at McDonald's. We could have, you know, put some yellow tape around it. Instead, we just shut everything down. And I, I don't I know. Much yeah. everyone who who was at risk was already staying home every anyways. Right. That's the thing. Like I was saying, it's not like old people aren't taking precautions. I was saying during the last debate, every time you know Bernie wouldn't shut up or whatever, the moderator should have just coughed. You know, they would have cleared that stage. They would have cleared that stage in like two point five seconds. Seriously. Right. And you know, Bernie is an o- he's an overcorrector as far as evading. Like you saw him hit that speed bag and then came back hit him in the face. So the second time he's like, oh. So you know, if the person jumped, <coughs> he'd be like. Rah! and go out of his chair. <laughs> right. And that would be fun because then he'd be doing a commercial for the, the bracelet, falling and I can't get up. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> we both hate the Chinese government. I hate the Ooh. Chinese government because I sympathize with the, uh, the Chinese people. Uh, what's your, and I know you talked about this in your, in your video. How do you feel? How do you view kind of the people who have to live under this regime? Because it seems like that's sort of forgotten by the American media. They lump our targeting of Chinese, the Chai Coms, in with all of the people who, by the way, are the same people who say, don't trust China, China asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting, so you took the words right out of I'm my I'm sorry. Mouth. I love that guy. <laughs> that, that guy, guy so is just, he is a gift to man. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Hong Kong. And, and boy, could, could Hong Kong have called this harder? Mm-hmm. For Christ's sake, Jesus, protesting this just yeah. ahead yeah. Yeah. of the massive pandemic outbreak. <laughs> and I mean, you've seen Taiwan, right? How they've been excluded, too, from the World Health Organization meetings. And when asked about it, the guy just said, oh, I didn't hear the question. We ran that yesterday, the Skype call. It's remarkable to me. Um, anyway, I want to get back to the question. What's your view on the difference between the Chinese government and, and the people? Because I know you had some insight in your video, which I appreciated. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up with people. Yeah, my best friend growing up uh, was an expatriate from China and so forth. I mean, the, the, the Chinese people, I think, innately have the same desire to uh, go out and work and earn a living that everyone else does. But they're saddled with this great leap for post great leap forward regime that's uh, seven decades in to uh, mass murder and starvation and death (laughs) and uh, teabagging the entire planet in their global socialist revolution. And I think that's the ultimate irony. You know, the world is shut down and the economy is at a standstill and people are begging daddy government to step in and divest them of their personal liberty uh, in exchange for momentary safety. To me, uh, the Chinese 
have arguably achieved their world socialist revolution, <laughs> arguably, <laughs> arguably mm. on a temporary basis, but they have achieved their world socialist revolution, the one they aspired to for 70 years yeah. uh, without firing a shot. That's pretty incredible. That actually really is an interesting way to look at it and, and certainly shows who their allies are in the American media, right? Because the American media carried their waters related to the Chinese propaganda. And uh, they did the same thing. A lot of people don't realize this when they talk about South Korea. And they go, well, look, South Korea is more successful than the United States. Well, hold on a second. You're talking about a place that basically has the population density of New York City, almost the entire country, is very homogenous, which does matter with viruses because it makes testing easier. You have a more predictable kind of outcome. And they doxed their own citizens. They used they personal and private data and made it publicly available so that people could avoid folks with the coronavirus. So when they point to South Korea as a success story, I just think that you want to be the world's most powerful genie? Everything that comes with it. They need to let people know how South Korea did it. And you know what? At least it'd be a litmus test because maybe a lot of Americans would say, fine, I want Apple to hand over my, my targeting, my location data, and I want to be doxxed publicly. But at least we'd know. Right. <laughs> if the, you know, and that's the shame. You know, if, if I guess every silver lining has a black cloud, I was hoping that we would at least get rid of K-pop out of all this. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, not yet. They're, those stands are out there, man. I think that's that is just part. a little bit of sour grapes because you and I, who work online, know that nothing we ever do, ever, for the rest of our lives, will surpass Gangnam Style, and rightfully so. <laughs> that was the perfect YouTube video. Yes. Um, let me, well, let me, uh, before we move on to you being uh, manually uh, throttled, I guess actually uh, oh, banned yeah. by uh, the yeah. folks at CNN, Quick question, since you're obviously a big film fan, what do you think about the film industry, like the decision now to release a lot of uh, titles digitally? And do you think that maybe this is going to become a permanent thing in the future? Because this has kind of changed the way I think a lot of releases yeah. work. I mean, people, home viewing the experience is so good now that so I do wonder if they think, you know what, let's just do this. We, let's not use the multiplex Petri yeah. dishes. Oh, man, some of this Robin Williams genie ain't going back in the bottle. You know, now that yeah, all right. these businesses know that people can work from home for cheaper... <laughs> Some yeah. of these businesses are going to keep them there. Yeah. No, <laughs> Some that, of them will be fired in the process, but, you know, it, 100%, that's going to happen. So some of this is going to be permanent, and that could be part of it. But I think, honestly, a lot of the stuff that they're releasing, not all of it, but a lot of it is, well, this was obviously going to bomb anyway, so <laughs> let's just kind of... Right. It's, uh, it's yeah. kind of like that... What was that sh Seth Rogen movie about North Korea that Sony oh, yeah, released yeah, yeah. after right. being threatened. <laughs> the movie that was obviously going to go up like a fart in church, anyways. <laughs> like uh, was it the dic it wasn't the dictator was Sasha Baron Cohen? What was the it called? Interview. The interview. The interview. Wow. The interview. Yeah, it, wasn't kind of reminds me of that. That's what, yeah. that's what I. Re wasn't great. Yeah, I think you're probably right. They probably said like, ah, the Mulan real life Redux. Eh, you know what? We'll put it for free as a bonus on their 5.99 Verizon plan with Disney <laughs> Plus. Uh, and we're mostly pissed because we got all the costumes and we we cut a parody right. intro to Mulan timed we're to the release, ready. and then they said we're not releasing it. We said, well, we did all this work. Yep. Right. So you know, good no good deed goes unpunished. It's a shame. They that's the one thing. I, 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 it's a shame. Movies is the one thing we don't have a shortage of right now. <laughs> right, yeah. that's a good point. Though I am watching Ozark and uh, of course Tiger King, and I've enjoyed oh, those immensely. Tiger King's so good. Although Tiger King could have been three episodes, really, it didn't need to be True, seven. Yeah. It sort they of spread it out, out, but it was good. So, uh, is Razor Fist Rageaholic is a YouTube channel? Uh, before we go, I wanted yeah. to ask you. You said you recently had a stream taken down by CNN, and you know we're no stranger to this uh, with the biggest companies in the world having yeah. forced YouTube yeah. to retool their policies because <laughs> of us. What happened with you? Well, I mean, as, as I'm sure you're well aware, these big media conglomerates now are hiring outside consulting firms to just prowl YouTube on debate night and uh, get stream shut down and channels flagged. And it turns out we uh, encountered a similar issue, oh, apart no. from being uh, weakly targeted by Sam Cedar, I mean. Oh, uh, hmm. We both... We both had streams that were pulled for copyright uh, under wafer thin premises. I mean, of I course. alter the footage. You can barely hear it. You can barely see it. You know, right. I'm, it's more or less me roasting the debates. Yeah, but uh, it was it was yanked by the free speech advocates at uh, NPCNN. Oh, oh so, very uh, nice. Uh, did you get it? Did you get it fixed? Uh, they have another day to take me to court or get off the pot. 
So we'll see. Are It'll we sure that's how the system works, though, now? Because I thought because that's what it used to be, right? They would file a strike, and then you would file a counterclaim, and they had to respond within 14 days. But then they changed the YouTube system. I don't know exactly what it is now. That's why I have a half agent lawyer and retainer. According to the according to the email I received from uh, the always consistent YouTube, yeah. uh, they have 10 to 14 days to take me to court, okay. or uh, or they have to back off. Or and then what, the strike is is absolved. Would be absolved, yeah. Okay. You wouldn't happen to know any half Asians, would you? I, you know what I would. I was going to say, if it doesn't work out, then definitely I'll put you in touch with them. But that used to be the process. The, the problem is you don't get those views back, especially when it's a live stream. You know, that's what we had with the yeah. Oscars stream. Uh, when it's a, li- they know that they, they never take you to court. By the way, we've had this at least 10, 12 times. And when it happens less and less now, because I think we've been somewhat litigious, not overly so, but we've, like I said, we're never going to be a shark. Conservatives can't be sharks on YouTube, but you can be one hell of a puffer fish. You can make them wish that they had picked someone else and so they stopped trying to take us to court but they still do abuse the system because how many people are watching live and how many people are going to watch within those first 24 to 48 hours it's topical you don't get that back and that's why the process isn't fair and favors the big guys yeah right the only thing that brings me comfort is the mental image of Jake Tapper saying, gee, that sucks, as he clicked the uh, submit copyright claim button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Wolf Blitzer right next to him just going, gee, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> He's barely, I mean, there are reporters who, and Jake Tapper, I disagree with him on a whole lot, but Wolf Blitzer is barely walking upright. <laughs> It's true. My favorite, my the ultimate Wolf Blitzer moment is still Katrina, though. The so the so poor and so black comment. Oh, it's the, that is immortal, no. immortal in the halls of the internet. It's well, it's that. It's a toss up between that and just the the screenshot of him on Celebrity Jeopardy with like negative thirty six hundred. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the lowest score ever. Not only on Celebrity Jeopardy, but I think ever. Just yeah, just yes. ever total in Jeopardy. Like it's the kind of it's the kind of playing performance if you put up on the board at a trivial pursuit game game night, you know, with couples they don't even want to be with, they'd never let you live it down. <laughs> and this guy thought it was a good idea nationally. So, okay. This stream will be you have two more days, you said? Yeah, uh one more day actually. So, they have to they have to I don't know, I guess hoard some toilet paper and then shit or get off the pot. But right. yeah, either, either way. way. Okay, good. And if not, do reach out and we can have obviously half Asian Bill Richmond. Uh, we don't do this for everybody because, you know, it's my retainer. But you probably need assistance right now more than I do. Uh, do right. let us know and we'll be in touch. In closing, where's the best place for people to find you, uh, Mr. Fist? And and, and what's uh what would what would be your thoughts that you want to leave folks with? The, well, I mean, you can find me on YouTube. Just uh, look up the Rageaholic. I'm sure you'll find 20 negative videos about me before you find one of my videos. Some uh, mine. That's how the algorithm <laughs> works. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, of course, it's the Young Turks. I noticed that's a strange huh. one. Yeah. I have. There's like 15 videos up there of me saying, "Why are you ducking me, Razor Fist?" So just so you know, I'm getting upset. <laughs> Uh, and then on Twitter, of course, uh, Razor Fist uh, with a zero, of course, instead yeah. of an O. Um, I apologize. I have the most convoluted URLs in all of Christendom. <laughs> but but yeah, uh, so, I mean, honestly, that that's pretty much where you can beard me. I'm also on BitChute, uh, and it's just normal. It's just BitChute.com slash Razor Fist, which is probably where we're all ha- going to have to go eventually. Yeah, it uh, could be, <laughs> although uh, Mug Club, uh, the water is warm, uh, and even in the uh, even in the spell of being entirely demonetized so we can talk about that more sometime but off air mr fist it is rageaholic raise your fist for everyone thank you for tuning in it is still mug club quarantine quarantine is the code 30 dollars off for the entire month we'll see you tomorrow morning live at 10 a.m eastern with good morning mug club 